this lecture, I'm going to talk about the gradient method. This is a particular case of the subgradient method when the function f involved is differentiable. So to make the presentation simple, I only focus on the case where um, the objective function is a C1 function. So let me go ahead and give the definition of the class of C1 functions. A function f from Rn to R is called a C1 function if f has all partial derivatives. which are continuous functions. And in the case where the function f is C1, we denote the gradient of the function f as follows. So the gradient of the function f of f at x bar in Rn is given by so the gradient of f at x bar is the n tuple of real numbers considering of all partial derivatives of the function so this is the partial derivative of the function f with respect to x1 at x bar, this is the partial derivative of the function f with respect to um, x2 at x bar, and this is the uh, partial derivative of the function f um, with respect to xn at x bar. Okay, and as you know, this is a vector in Rn. Okay, so let me go ahead and recall the um, subgradient algorithm and then talk about the gradient algorithm. Uh, here, let alpha k be a sequence of positive real numbers And as we know, alpha k is called the kth step size. Okay, and uh, the subgradient algorithm works as follows. At first, we choose a starting point, say x naught in R n, and then um, we define x k plus one by this formula. X k plus one is equal to x k minus alpha k times v k, where k runs from 0, 1, 2, and so on. Okay? And here, um, v k is chosen in the subdifferential of the function f at x k. Now, in this case, we suppose that f is c1. Then, um, in this case, we will see that the subdifferential of the function f at x k is just the gradient of the function f at this point. And we already discussed that in um, an earlier lecture. So then, this subgradient algorithm becomes the gradient algorithm. So the gradient algorithm works as follows. At first, we choose a starting point x naught in Rn, and then we define xk plus 1 by this formula. xk plus 1 is equal to xk minus alpha k times the gradient of the function f at xk. And over here, k runs from 
zero, one, two, and so on. Okay, so this is a very very simple algorithm. Okay, so um, after we um, know x naught, uh, we choose x naught in R n. X one is given by x naught minus alpha naught times the gradient of the function f at x naught. Okay, and after we know x one, x two is found by um, this formula, x2 is equal to x1 minus alpha 1 times the gradient of the function f at x1 and so on. Okay, um, now I'm going to discuss the convergence of the gradient algorithm. As you know, the subgradient algorithm convert, converges with the convergence rate of big O 1 over square root of k. And this convergence rate is slow in general. Now in the case where um, the function f here is c1, we will show that under some condition on the function f, we can achieve the convergence rate of big O 1 over k. And this is a really, really big improvement. So I'm going to go ahead and discuss um, this issue um, in what follows. Uh, in order to discuss the convergence of the gradient method, we need some supporting results on convex functions. So in this um, figure, uh, this is the graph of a differentiable convex function. And if we pick a point x bar in the uh, domain of the function, and then we draw this tangent line at the point x bar, f of x bar. As you can see from here, this tangent line lines below the graph of the function f. Okay? And the equation of this tangent line, as you can see, is f of x bar, y is equal to f of x bar plus the derivative of the function f at x bar times x minus x bar. Note that this is the slope of the tangent line at x bar. And uh, therefore, we always have this inequality, f of x bar plus f prime of x bar times x minus x bar is always less than or equal to f of x for all x in R. And this result works in higher dimension. So let me go ahead and state the um, relate, related result. Let f from Rn to R be a C1 function. Suppose that f is convex then we get the following inequality f of x bar plus um, the inner product of the gradient of f at x bar and x minus x bar this is always less than or equal to f of x. And this is true for all x and x bar in Rn. Note that in the case where n is equal to 1, so we have a real valuable, variable function, then the gradient of the function f at x bar reduces to the derivative of the function at this point. And the inner product becomes the usual product. So this inequality becomes the um, inequality I discussed earlier. Okay? So let me go ahead and give the detailed proof of this lemma. Um, now we fix any x and x bar in Rn for any t in the interval 0, 1, we have this. f of x bar plus t times x minus x bar um, is, this is equal to f of um, tx plus 1 minus t x bar. Okay, so this is a very um, uh, simple algebra manipulation. This is just t times x, uh, this is x bar, and here we subtract t times x bar. That's why we get 1 minus t times 
x bar and by the convexity of the function f um, this is less than t times f of x plus um, 1 minus t times f of x bar okay and again we can rearrange this and get this um, f of x bar plus t times f of x minus f of x bar okay now, uh, and this is true for, for all t in the interval 0, 1, okay? And now, uh, we can subtract both the sides of this inequality by f of x bar and get this. f of x bar plus t times x minus x bar minus f of x bar is less than or equal to t times f of x minus f of x bar. And this is true for all t in the interval 0, 1, okay? Now at this point, we can um, divide both the sides by t and get this. f of x bar plus t times x minus x bar minus f of x bar over t is less than or equal to f of x minus f of x bar. And this is true for all t in the interval 0, 1, okay? Now, because the function f is uh, c1, if we let t approach 0 from the right, we will get this. The um, inner product of the um, gradient of the function f at x bar with x minus x bar is less than or equal to f of x minus f of x bar, okay? And, and here, if we add both the sides of this inequality by f of x bar, we get um, exactly the inequality that we want to prove. In the pre previous lemma, we show that for a C1 convex function f, we can lower estimate f by a uh, R5 function, y equals f of x bar plus uh, f prime of x bar times x minus x bar. Now, um, we can show that under some additional condition on the function f. Um, f can be upper estimated by a quadratic function. So, um, the assumption involved is the Lipschitz continuity of the gradient of the function. So, let me go ahead and give the definition of uh, Lipschitz continuous functions. A function f from Rn to Rm is called Lipschitz continuous with constant L greater than zero if the norm of f of x minus um, f of y is less than or equal to L times norm of x minus y and this is true for all x and y in Rn, okay? So now, um, if f is a C1 function, we say that the gradient of the function f is Lipschitz continuous with constant L. if um, this inequality is satisfied. So the gradient of f of x minus the gradient of f at y is always less than or equal to L times norm of x minus y. And this is true for, um, for all x and y in Rn, okay? So um, this is just uh, a particular case of this definition because um, 
um, the gradient of f is a function from rn to rn. Okay. So now we are going to show that uh, under the assumption that f, the gradient of the function f is Lipschitz continuous, um, the function f itself can be upper estimated by a quadratic function. Okay, so that is the content of the Ness lemma. Suppose that f is a C1 function whose gradient is Lipschitz continuous with constant L then we will see that f of x is always less than or equal to f of x bar plus the inner product of the gradient of the function f at x bar with x minus x bar plus L over 2 times norm of x minus x bar squared. And this is true for all x and x bar in Rn. And as you know, uh, the right hand side here is a quadratic function that uh, upper estimated that upper estimates the function f. And, uh, and as you can see from here, um, f is lower estimated by a, um, an R5 function. So let me go ahead and give the detailed proof of this lemma. Here we define the function, the function 5, from R to R by this formula. Phi of t is equal to f of um, x bar plus t times x minus x bar. Over here, x and x bar are fixed as in the um, lemma. Okay? So um, as you can see from here, phi of 0 is equal to um, you replace t by 0 in here, uh, so 5 0 is equal to f of x bar, okay? And 5 of 1, uh, now here we replace t by 1, so we have x bar plus x minus x bar, so it's just x. So 5 1 is equal to f of x. And as you uh, see earlier, the derivative of the function f at t is equal to um, the inner product of the gradient of the function f at x bar plus t times x minus x bar with x minus x bar. Okay? Now, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, we get this. 5 of 1 minus 5 of 0 is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of 5 of prime of t dt. So now if we plug in, we will get this. f of x minus, this is f of x, and this is f of x bar, is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of this inner product, uh, the gradient of f at x bar plus t times x minus x bar with x minus x bar dt, okay? So, um, at this point, we can subtract both the sides by um, this term, by the inner product of the um, gradient of the function f at x bar and um, with x minus x bar. So, um, then we will get this. Then, um, f of x minus f of x bar minus the inner product of the gradient of f at x bar with x minus x bar 
is equal to this integral, integral from 0 to 1 of this. Um, here is the gradient, the inner product of the gradient of f at x bar plus t times x minus x bar with x minus x bar. And then we subtract this, um, the gradient of f at x bar with x minus x bar, okay? And the integral is computed with respect to dt, okay? So how come we get this? Um, note that this is just a, a constant. So if you compute the integral from 0 to 1 of this constant dt, you get this constant times the integral from 0 to 1 of dt, okay? So this is exactly 1, okay? So that's why um, this is true, okay? And at this point, we can rewrite it as follows. This is the integral from 0 to 1, okay? Now, um, by the distributive law, we can factor out this. And inside of this, we get the gradient of f at x bar plus t times x minus x bar minus the gradient of f at x bar. And over here, we get x minus x bar dt, okay? Now, at this point, we can apply the cauchy schwarz inequality and get this. This is less than or equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of the norm of this. And over here, we multiply by norm of x minus x bar dt, okay? Next, we will apply the Lipschitz continuity of the gradient of the function. So this is less than or equal to the integral from 0 to 1. And here we have L times norm of this part minus x bar. So we get exactly uh, t times x minus x bar. And over here, we get norm of x minus x bar. And we compute this integral with respect to dt, okay? So um, here t is a number in between 0 and 1. So you can take it out of this norm notation. And then um, we can pull the constant outside. And then we obtain uh, the integral from 0 to 1 of t times dt, which is 1 half, okay? Note that uh, this is exactly um, L over 2 times norm of x minus x bar squared, okay? How can we get this? Again, this is just what? This is just t times norm of x minus x bar. That's why we get norm of x minus x bar squared, and here L is a constant as well, and then we take the constant out and compute the integral of t dt, that's why we get one half, and then we end up having this, okay? So now, um, this inequality is exactly what we want to prove, because here we can uh, move this, these terms to the, the right-hand side, okay? And so the proof of the uh, lemma is complete.